Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Listen, I want to give a shout out to some of the latest subscribers here, especially the guys with the comments. I really enjoy hearing the comments. So please subscribe. Give me some comments. Heard from Ron. Uh, he was in a DMZ 1969 over in Vietnam. I'm sure he has a lot of really neat stories to tell. Maybe we can find out some of those stories in the future here. Uh, Chris made some comments about the draft. The draft was very unpopular, Chris. Uh, you know, that's why they got rid of it. Uh, volunteer Army is the way to go. Uh, let's see what happens in the future here. I uh, hope they don't ever bring it back. Uh, Paul, guy from Desert Storm, appreciate your comments there. Paul, thank you for your service. And, um, you know, hap uh, I'm happy to have you as a subscriber, too. I really do appreciate it. Try to get into more of the storytelling here. Uh, Vic, uh, 1966, uh, there were guys that were went to the uh, draft with him. They put him in the Marines. Uh, I told a story before about how they went down the hallway and a captain selected people in the line, stepped to the other side of the hallway. They went to the Marines. Never saw them again. I don't know what happened to them. But scary stuff, really scary stuff, because those guys were ground pounders. I mean, they were infantry. They're Marines. They're, they're the ones that did all the tough, uh, you know, face-to-face uh, -face fighting. So um, it was scary to even think you could get drafted into that when you even, didn't even want to be there. And uh, John, I'm really not sure what you mean, John, by 62B. Uh, really not sure what that is. Maybe give me some more information. Listen, I did want to plug something here. Uh, we do have a really nice Mike's Garage t-shirt. They're available. My guy's going to put the, uh, the how you get to the website on the bottom of the video here. So check that out. Mike's Garage, a beautiful 55 Chevy hardtop. My favorite car. Uh, love that car. Uh, I did have to sell it. Couldn't afford to redo it the third time. Um, I had a, a 400 in it with a four barrel, uh, had the automatic in it. After a while, I took the four speed out, put an automatic in the third time I did it. And it didn't need to be redone again. The interior and the drivetrain was just worn out because it did drive it a lot too, not just car shows. We went out cruising on it. I drove it down to the beach a couple times. Just used the car like a regular car. I love that car. Well, listen, uh, I did want to give you a shout out here about Vietnam and the children. Um, we used to go out and uh, work on the roads and do construction and things like that. And every once in a while, you'd get two or three teenagers would come around, usually a boy and two or three young girls, you know, 13, 14 years old. And they would always have like six or seven, five and six year olds with them. So they would bring them in. The kids would come over uh, wanting chocolate or they wanted to, hi, how are you, giving you a hug and everything. And that was all nice, okay? It was fake. It was pretty easy to tell it was fake. Uh, and the kids, the older children, would be looking around and counting. Now, they would see how many guys were there, what kind of weapons you had, did you have any heavy weapons, how many trucks there were, what kind of, what were you doing there, okay? So they would count everything. Then after a little while, they would say something. And when the boy said something, everything stopped. The kids turned around, walked over to him. The girls turned around. They all walked away together. All he did was say one word, like, let's go or something. I don't know exactly what he said. Uh, we had a guy in our troop. He was from Hawaii. Uh, looked very oriental. They kept mistaking him for a Vietnamese. Was all standing around with no shirts on, working, shoveling, uh, doing asphalt, things like that. And we were maintaining the equipment as uh, part of the motor pool. So he would go follow them, okay, to see where they went. And there would be two or three adults. They weren't really armed or anything, but they would be maybe a quarter mile down the road he would let them get way ahead of him and follow them down. And the older children would then tell the adults what was going on where we were, what we were doing, what kind of armament we had, and how many guys were there, what kind of trucks we had. The other thing you had to watch with the kids, what they would do, and it was our grenade, okay? 
they would get a hand grenade and with the handle, those of you who are familiar with it, they wrap a rubber band around the handle, put two or three rubber bands and hold the handle in. Then you pull the pin. Now, what they would try and do is put that grenade with the rubber bands on it in the tank, in the gas tank, in with the diesel fuel, in with the gasoline. Uh, the bigger trucks, the, the dump trucks, the two and a half ton, the heavy equipment, all had a big huge cap for the fuel so you could fill it quickly. And uh, that a grenade would drop in there, no problem. So that's what they would try and do. If you were distracted or nobody was around, they would go over, take the fuel cap off because it didn't lock, and they would drop in the grenade and tighten the cap. Four, five, six, seven hours later, when the rubber bands rotted away, bing, the handle would come off, activate the grenade six, seven, six or seven seconds later, boom, the grenade would go off inside the tank of diesel fuel, okay? Because what they used to do is they used to fill the tanks at the end of the day. So you'd be ready to go in the morning. Nobody was allowed to uh, be late to make their deliveries of asphalt, gravel, stone, whatever it had to deliver in the heavy vehicles. So you had to get the, your truck refueled, everything checked, oil checked and everything, park the truck so it's ready to go in the morning so you could take off. Never really noticed a grenade in there. So anytime kids came around, you were, your sensors went up, um, let's watch these kids. Everybody would go stand next to a vehicle, try to be nice to the kids, didn't want to be mean. They didn't want us there anyway because the Army was not very popular there. I don't care what they tell you on TV, but we weren't really welcome there. We were just seen as a way to get cash, um, a way to make money. They really didn't know about freedom and how things were going to get better or worse. They just wanted to know if, if, how much money we were going to be able to get them. So that's, that's another story to get into it. But we had to watch the kids. Uh, it was a shame. Um, a couple times we caught them with grenades. Uh, we did lose one vehicle, a dump truck, to a grenade with rubber bands around it. Uh, the investigator said that's what it was. It was an internal thing because you could tell the fuel tank blew out and all the little shrapnel holes were in it. So that's one of the stories I wanted to tell. Again, thanks for subscribing. Oh, you know what I wanted to tell you? Um, there's a guy I have known for a couple of years now, and I've been working on him, trying to get him to uh, do an interview. Now, uh, I can't do an interview here in the garage. I'm not set up for that. But uh, a guy I work with sometimes, uh, is, his name is, uh, well, his screen name is uh, Bad Weather. And his channel is up late, UPL8. That's his channel. Now, he has a studio near here where I can go there and take a telephone interview, and we can play that on a video. Now, this guy is a lot younger than me, <laughs> and he was a drone pilot. So he flew drones in Afghanistan. Um, uh, he's not going to be able to tell us anything that's top secret or classified, but I just think we're going to have a really interesting video. I'm going to try to do that after the 4th of July weekend here. That's what we're in, we're in 4th of July weekend right now. Next weekend, he says he's going to have some time. I'm going to make sure I can get the other studio. And we're going to interview a drone pilot uh, beginning to end. I don't think we're going to get any classified information out of him. But I'm sure it'll be really interesting. So watch for that video. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you uh, tuning in here. Uh, be safe out there. See you next time.